Of course. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, let me share my screen. And this is a you know this is a meetup. It's not a conference talk. So something that we can do here that we cannot do in normally is that you can interrupt me. Uh, so if you if you can you know if you have any if you have any follow ups that you want me to pause, uh, ask questions, uh, I'm happy to do that because uh, you know the the whole point is it's not for me to like lecture or anything. Um, this, these are just things that I really think is important for all of us, and uh, we should have a chat about it. I think it's uh, I don't think I don't think we chat about this enough. Um, all right, so I guess I will get started. Uh, let me hopefully present properly. Um, and I can hear you if, if, uh, if anyone says anything or uh, you know, post stuff in the chat. I'll, I'm just gonna check uh, period periodically. But yeah, this, this, call is, this talk is called the operating system of you. Basically, it is one analogy that I have extended into an entire talk. <laughs> and, but I, I think it's a really apt analogy. And I'll talk about why later on. But I, I wanna motivate this talk and this conversation with a story. And it's a really cool story that I found uh, of Jeff Dean and Sanjay Gamawat. Uh, Jeff Dean is the head of Google Brain. Sanjay is, I actually don't know what he does today, but uh, the two of them are, base, are a very famous couple that were together responsible for some of the biggest things at Google, like BigQuery, Spanner, Google Translate, Bigtable, MapReduce, TensorFlow, Google Brain. There, uh, uh, Google has an engineering ladder that goes from level one to level 10, uh, to level 10 being the most senior. Uh, and uh, most junior engineers come in at level three, senior engineers will be like level five, Google fellows are level 10. Jeff Dean and Sanjay are the only level 11s in the entire company of Google. And that's something that's interesting about the Googlers is that they can see the contributions that Jeff, Jeff and Sanjay make. And there was a very interesting comment that I found uh, for, for, hit, for this guy on Hacker News who said, We're, look at Jeff and Sanjay's commit history and code review dashboard. They actually are not that much productive in terms of code written than a decent software engineer three, the junior engineer, who knows his code base. The reason they have reputation and rock stars is that they can apply this productivity to things that really matter. And I think that's something that we intuitively get. It's not about our lines of code. It's about how we apply our talents into in, in, in some way. Uh, and that really struck with me because that means that uh, programmers are not all built the same, not all, like we may have the raw programming talent, but it takes a little bit more than that to be really effective and productive. It's something that I started, and then I started studying, you know, as, as, as part of my book, um, how to separate out the people who make software. And I had all of these uh, roles kind of mapped up. And it basically, it just goes from machine all the way to end user and what kind of thing you're trying to produce. So if you produce firmware, hardware, uh, you work with hardware. Or if you produce cloud stuff, you, you work with distributed systems. If you uh, create languages, you, you basically work on a runtime. If you create backend services, you, 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 know, you write business logic. If you create front-end applications, you're, you're really working a user experience. And at the end, if you're a no-code develop, no code developer, a CMS user, or a designer, uh, you're really creating content. Uh, where you're configuring an application that someone else has already made. So that's a, that's, a, that's a really high level, like if you never thought about this for the first time, it like suddenly makes sense now. And that's what, how I like to approach things. Like I, there's, there's all this disorganized stuff in the world. What will we do? What, what insights can we get if uh, we organize them in, in, a, in a nice way? So, so for example, uh, one insight from here that you can get is that there are fewer people working at the bottom of the, the funnel, but a lot more people at the top of the funnel because it's so much easier to work with. Um, we, we, we need software to, to uh, separate these things. And I think you can be more effective if you understand where you are. You can understand how and why the interview questions, like why do we train so much for algorithm questions? That's because we used to train developers at this level of abstraction, but you know, if you're if you're an application or content developer, you're actually at a higher level of, of extraction. Uh, and I've never been asked like an algorithm interview apart from Google. Um, there's also, you know, a wide, and I, I, start, I start thinking about like the wide variety of developers. Uh, so there's levels, there's where you are in the stack. There's also, uh, it's just like salary and <laughs> what you do. Uh, so, so it's really interesting that like, you know, there, there are differences and uh, not all developer careers are made the same. And, and that's, that's something I, I started to think about as well. You also started to think about the teams they work in, inside of. And, uh, and this, is, this, is, this is pretty interesting. Like uh, individual developers, um, 
uh, you know, you, you can, there's no such thing as like a 10x developer, but you do, you do have um, more productive developers and less productive developers. So I, I want to talk about why, you know, these are the end results that are observable. Uh, we need to really dig into the internal systems that help these people produce the end results. Um, so for those who don't know me, I'm, I'm Sean. I, I used to be in finance. I went through a boot camp in 2017. Um, did a s startup that was uh, that I don't talk about <laughs> uh, after that, and then and then went into Netlify for for a couple years, and just joined AWS this year. Uh, I, I do teach uh, React and TypeScript on on Egg.io, and I, we can talk about that as well. I, I maintain the React and TypeScript cheat sheets. Um, I was a React JS moderator for for a long time, so uh, there's like over two hundred thousand of us uh, on on Reddit. Uh, and I also helped to organize Svelte Society, which is like a global series of meetups and, and two conferences. Uh, and we have a conference next year. Uh, and, and I'm quite known for this learn in public essay that I wrote. So, um, <clears throat> and, and so, so when I, I think at the start of this meetup, we already talked about the book, so I don't need to talk too much about it. But basically, I separated my thoughts on career stuff, or like I researched a bunch of people and looked at their career advice, and then I, you know, uh, compiled it down to uh, three strategies, three levels, like principles, strategies, and tactics. Um, and, uh, and really, like, ultimately, I think, I think that the main thing that, that we, that people need in order to implement all of this is they need habits. Uh, because at the end of the day, we care about outcomes, and your, your outcomes are a lagging measure of your habits. Like, if you read the best book in the world, I don't care what book you read, uh, it doesn't matter unless you can make it stick, right? Um, and you have to know how to convert this into um, something that you actually can, can use. So I really like this book by James Clear, Atomic Habits. Um, this is one of his, his, uh, his mantras, is that you get what you repeat. So it's, it's this idea that um, we, can, we can talk about high level skills and strategy all we want, but at the end of the day, uh, that, will, that, is, that is super helpful. At the end of the day, if we don't have control of our own habits, uh, then we don't really get to that uh, advanced state of things. We need to we need to take care of our, our own personal systems, um, and and you know he he draws this picture where he he says like really habits are uh, you know more important than everything else because if we fo focus on compound growth we have uh, you know we have really nice sustaining and compounding growth. Uh, whereas if we focus on tactics and sprint up and down all the time, um, we only get so far. And I think I think that's that's fundamentally true of my own personal growth. I'll try something for a while. I'll, it'll, it'll, it'll be a little bit successful, and then I'll stop, and then and then I'll go back to normal again. Uh, what I really need is is habits that help to level me up in in in, in a consistent fashion. So those are those are really powerful things as well. And and the converse, the, we're talking about good habits here, but also you know the cessation of bad habits uh, is equally important. So this is kind of how I, I rank it in terms of like. You know, you think about the developer career ladder, uh, sorry, the developer stack, the software career layers stack. Um, there's a similar thing here where, where there's you, which is the hardware at the bottom, um, like your, your physical body, the, the, the assets that you've been given with, your, your body and your brain. And then there's, the, there's what other people see of you, right? They see the human, they see the career, they see the job. You might need tactics for the job, strategies for the career, and principles for the human. But at the end of the day, there's still this like layer, like an like a operation layer between uh, how you, uh, you know, that, all those is how you apply yourself to other people, but here is how you serve yourself uh, and how we look after ourselves. And I think that's, that's the domain of habits is, is, is my conclusion of that. And I kind of call this, you know, in the analogy operating systems versus applications, like that's the difference. Like you need a good OS to run all these applications on. And you, you can tell when the OS is slowing down your applications, right? Like you, you can get the best applications in the world, but if you have a crappy OS, then it doesn't matter. Um, so, so we really need a, 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 to work on an OS just as much as we work on our applications. Um, so if, I, if I'm going to take this analogy, uh, I really had to start studying what an OS is. Uh, it's kind of composed into uh, you know, a few of these spaces. But I'm really going to focus on this part, the bottom bit. right? Um, it basically, you know, at, its, at, its, at its core, OS is a kernel, uh, but it interfaces with memory, uh, disk drive, network interface, and CPU, uh, and, and, a, and a bunch of other, other things. So we can take that analogy and, and kind of run with it. Um, so the first, the first part I'm going to talk about is firmware. And so what is the firmware for our our uh, you know habits are of our of our developer habits, and that's really sleep, ergonomics, eating, and exercise. As far as I can, uh, you know, summarize this whole part. 
so sleep uh pretty you know don't don't take my word for it uh take the word of bill gates uh he's actually blogging these days uh so if you go gatesnotes.com slash book slash why we sleep uh he actually reviews this book and he talks about how he wasn't sleeping very much through, uh, during the Microsoft years, uh, and he really regrets that now because he he, he sees that it was not necessary. Um, and there's a there's a real science behind it. So uh, I guess all I'm saying is sleep more, sleep uh, ha have a have a good, uh, you know, try to aim for deep sleep. Um, you know, you know, like you know the you know the the basic things to to do. I think uh, we just forget the importance every now and then. So I try to serve as a reminder. Uh, ergonomics: sit up straight. You're pro most of you are probably hunched over like like I was. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I like this image because it really tells you without any words the kind of things you should be looking for. Like your head should be uh, have a have a vertical, be vertically level with the top of your monitor. Your arms should be extended like this and not kind of bent, uh, scrunched up. Uh, and your feet uh, should be should be comfortably kind of stretched out like that and not kind of curved in because that will also cause the curve in your back uh, over here. Uh, so those are those are interesting. So so it really kind of means that you need to you need a good chair that that's adjustable and a and a monitor with the height. Uh, so I try not to use uh, laptop uh, keyboards or monitors uh, because those are very not ergonomic. Like when when you when people make laptops, they optimize for portability, and uh, you know no, nobody's going anywhere these days. And uh, we should spend a bit of extra money to extend the portability by using a keyboard, mouse, you know, monitor. Uh, because those are those are those are much more ergonomic. So, um, and if that was too much, uh, use this four-step checklist: is your screen arm length away from you, top of your screen, elbow ninety degrees, and feet on the ground. So those are that, that's a very good four-step checklist. If you if you if you got that and your back is still straight, you're doing well. Uh, I personally had issues with my wrist because we type a lot. Uh, we have a limit. You know, Scott Hanselman always says like we have a limited number of uh, keystrokes in our in our hands and we need to make sure that we're not hurting our hands because we were never evolved to do this uh, particularly the, the keyboard combinations control c control s control v uh, we i because i'm a gamer uh we we are trained to do that because uh that's that's the shortcut because the other mouse the other hand is on the mouse um, but apparently the right way to do it is right hand control left hand a uh, csv uh, so it's 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 a it's a really deep topic, and uh, this is just the basic stuff. If you want to go really advanced, you can buy the more special ergonomic keyboards. Uh, I actually have the Microsoft Sculpt. Um, you can set a reminder to to do stretching for your for your hands. Um, sometimes you can wear a wrist brace as well. Uh, so let me show you an example of the wrist brace down here, uh, and, and that helps you that helps you settle out. Um, or you can switch your keyboard layout from QWERTY to Dvorak. Uh, a lot of people I think might be familiar with the origin of the QWERTY like keyboard layout, which is intentionally to slow you down uh, because that would make the, the typewriter stick less. But obviously that has no implication on how we do things today. Uh, this is from a, uh, a friend and a close reader, uh, Trey Tuna, who uh, actually has his keyboard suspended. Uh, so he types in a more natural position like that. And, some, and, and I'm, I'm thinking of investing in this vertical keyboard because I really like this idea that you're not pronating your, your hands, you're actually vertical. Uh, so I really like this idea. Uh, talent is voice coding. So uh, sometimes you just don't want to use your hands, and uh, that's uh, that's totally fine as well. And I've seen some demos of it. It's really impressive. I haven't tried it out yet. Um, so that's why I separated it into advanced RSI for when you really, really need help, and basic RSI, which is like preventative. Like you should do this now, uh, and and it's cheap uh, versus and so that you hopefully don't need this later. Okay, uh, exercise and eating. Uh, most developers do not exercise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and part of why I like I love doing this talk is because it reminds me of the the benefits of exercising, and uh, I do actually pay for a trainer to to go three to four times a week, and uh, yeah, you you know you know how it's important. I don't need to tell you. Uh, we sit a lot of the day. Here are all the problems with sitting. Okay, I don't need to read them out. Uh, stand up more, move more. Um, that's yeah. Let's just take care of our bodies as as a basic uh, firm firmware kind of thing. Uh, particularly air squats, we can do in a constrained space with no equipment. I really like that. Uh, normally, I would actually pause and do an air squat in front of you just to, uh, just to do them together. But uh, I don't think we have time. So I'm just going to uh, you know, skip ahead. But um, yeah, do them if, you're, if, you're, if you've got a free time. Uh, it seems silly, but nobody's judging you. And your body needs to take a break from sitting all the time. Uh, eating. Uh, we know we you know this is what I was brought up with with a lot of carbs, 
Uh, unfortunately, I'm still paying for that today because I'm still addicted to carbs. Then we move to keto, uh, where <laughs> or like the low carb diet. Uh, and now, and, and that's the direct opposite of the pizza diet, which uh, most meetups, you know, if, if BJS was uh, still meeting up, I'm sure you have pizza. Uh, that's, that's the American style. And uh, I really hate it. Uh, we, we, every, every meetup has pizza and it's, it's super, super unhealthy. And the healthy stuff is all the way at the bottom. Uh, that, that, is, that is not what we want to do. And we want to grow closer to here. Um, so yeah, just a reminder. Um, and yeah, so this is, this is the, the, the key quote from Scott Anselman, who is, is, you know, a huge figure in the C-Sharp, uh, Microsoft community, take care of yourself. This job can destroy your hands, back and shoulders, walk, talk, stand, squat, whatever your hands and back and brain are your money. Treat them right now. And they'll last you 30 to 50 years. Um, and that's something that, you know, I, I think you should care about. It, it's your body. No one's no, no job description is going to go like, Hey, you should work out more. You should eat less. Uh, you should eat right or you should take care of your hands, but uh, this is something that you need to take care of for yourself. Um, there's a chat. Let me just quickly check check this. Uh, Rashid Tarsimi says, keto rocks, one year full keto for me. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, I, you should do it to talk about it because I, I want to know how to how to go more keto. One difficulty is I'm, I'm living with my parents and they eat a lot of Asian food, so we are definitely not keto. Uh, I'm just eating less and working out more, um, and that's fine for me. So people got to find uh, what they're... Um, what their bar is and uh thanks for the comment because uh it's really helpful to you know make this a live session because uh, I, I think i think that's uh, that's that's what makes this worthwhile okay that was the firmware bit right taking care of your your hardware then there's the external devices taking care of all the stuff outside of you uh, so under here i have storage networking environment and virtualization so let's go a little bit into that so like a typical cpu a typical you know, processing unit uh, process that, that is CPU. But you know, like a CPU has cache, there's physical memory, there's, there's flash drive, and then there's this uh, uh, slower, slower drives. And so there's this idea of like different levels of memory. Um, and so we have, our, you know, the human equivalent is that we have working memory and then a longer lived memory, like long term, you know, uh, uh, mental memory. And then, and then the, the stuff that is outside of us basically forms our, you know, our, phys our, our uh, long-term storage um and and it's true in humans uh, you know it's we, we basically have uh, this kind of architecture of memory um about 20 minutes from now you're going to forget 40 percent of everything i just said uh about one day from now you're going to forget two-thirds of what i said and uh you know you know if i'm lucky a month from now you remember 20 percent uh, the, the only way that we know of to defeat this is to do space repetition, right? To, to continually refresh uh, notes or, or, you know, rewatch talks. So if you, if you come across, I'm not saying this talk, I'm just saying like, if you come across something that you found really insightful, uh, just remember that there is a forgetting curve and we humans are not very good at storing things. So uh, one way to, is to keep it alive inside of our, our living memory. Uh, obviously the other way is to write things down. Um, I have a very, my longest chapter in my book is about the benefits and how to, how to get started writing. Um, it scales really well. It's, it's searchable. It's stored forever uh, as your second brain. Uh, if you, if you really value your brain, you should, why not have two? And uh, <laughs> it seems pretty obvious to me. Um, it also forces you to structure your thoughts and it, people generally find that people who write uh, clearer thinkers and theory, clearer speakers as well because they've thought things through beforehand. Um, so I, I kind of call it like a defragmenting process for your brain. It also keeps you honest because you can't, once you write something down in the past and then you, you come back to it like a year or two years, three years from now, your memory cannot play tricks of yourself. It's, you wrote it down there at, 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 the, at the given timestamp. Um, so, so, so it really keeps you honest in, in terms of decision making uh, as well as just like remembering the sequence of events. Uh, power is it's really powerful because uh, I like to write before I code. Right, you should you should write a design doc before you code because you, you that's the cheapest form uh, of exploring ideas and getting feedback. Uh, it's also permissionless. You don't need anyone's permission to write. Just write something and and then send it out. Um, so I really like all these all these approaches. <clears throat> okay, that was that was the storage bit. Now we're on to networking. Uh, well, I think we're, a lot of us are familiar with the idea of Metcalfe's law, which is the value of a network uh, scales as uh, a square, uh, you know, and this is O-N, uh, O-N squared of uh, the number of nodes inside of the network. And I think that's something that as, a, as you get more senior, you, the value of your developer network uh, increases. When, you're, when you start out in this, in this industry or this career, you're a node of one. 
uh, then you make friends, then you're a note of you know, a few. Uh, and then the people that you work with and the, and the close friends that you have through open source and community uh, start to uh, hire you, start to work with you, whatever. Your net, you start to become partially hired for your network. And that, that's a very powerful thing. And your, your value increases as the square of your network. Um, so that's so that's an interesting way, uh, and and the, the the and particularly if you can uh, connect yourself with high-powered individuals, uh, people always ask me how to do networking. I, I I this is the way I that I put it. You don't sign people up for mentorship programs. You like you, you don't go to someone that you respect and go like, can you be my mentor for life? That is an unpaid job with no uh, job description. That is a shitty deal. Don't do that. Um, instead, try to do project-based partnerships like. If your mentor is putting out something new, go try it out. Uh, if it's a new library, a new demo, new talk, new course, just try it out, take notes, do something with it, pick up what they put down. Um, and, uh, and really, once you, once you really uh, you know, start, to, start to do that and give them feedback, because nobody else does it, it this is the super undervalued skill. It's almost like a hack because that they're, they're required to respond to you because that's what, it's the, con the social contract of um, you know, being a creator. If they start to work with you enough, and you, if you make good points, you make good summaries, um, then they start to see you as a collaborator and a peer and eventually a friend. Um, and I think that's, to me, the much more organic way of doing this, these things. Because then you're working with something that they are interested in, that you are also interested in learning. That is a nice form of mentorship that I really like. Uh, and it, and it's, uh, it's not open-ended, right? Like, uh, if, you, if you work together on something and it ends, then you can go your separate ways, and that's fine. Uh, that's a, so I think this is a very nice thing and I've, I've enjoyed it every time I've done it. Okay. Um, so then, then there's also this idea of marketing yourself. So once you've done something interesting uh, with your life, you build up some skills, uh, you should be able to market yourself. Most developers agree that marketing yourself is very important. They just don't know how to do it or they don't feel, feel they feel like it's icky. They're, it's uh, not part of their job description. So they don't do it. Uh, that is only hurting you. So people who can market themselves better uh, are doing better than, than you, even though they may not be as, as good a coder. Uh, so I have a whole essay on this. I don't have time to talk about it. Uh, but ideally, just you know, make, sure what you, make sure you know, do an inventory of what you have, like your personal brand, you pick a domain, uh, and as well as your business value and your tech skills. And then make sure you market yourself at work and in public as well. Uh, and we can talk about that in the Q&A as well. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna pause for questions. Uh, it looks like I have a, have a few questions. Uh, so Nico says, got a dog two months ago, forcing me daily to go on a walk. Yes, I really want a dog. Uh, <laughs> um, my, my family doesn't allow that right now, but when I'm living on my own again, I'm going to get a dog uh, because, yeah, they're, they're, they're great for walks. Uh, Stin says, I don't need to write this down or, or remember it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, try to write notes uh, for everything uh, because there's no point consuming more things and then and then not remembering any of it. it it just comes in one end and goes out the other end it's it's almost like you might as well not not consume anything uh so really the the, the goal of reading listening to podcasts watching talks is to take away one thing a few things uh that that you can refer to in the future or that you can apply to yourself and the rest is just you know for entertainment but like um consume in order to to do something not consume just for the sake of consuming Okay, Eamon says, uh, journaling helps me a lot. It gives me the clarity I need and helps me plan my next moves. It's also super nice for evaluating how you're doing and checking if you've been you know, respecting your good habits. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I, I like journaling a lot as well. Okay, um, so let's talk about environment. So that's the third part of this, uh, this sort of <laughs> things outside of us. Uh, so uh, the typical wisdom and the research that I've accumulated shows that you should try and separate your workplace from your bedroom, which is pretty important, you know, especially if you're all working remotely. The, te the room temperature is important. How often you're interrupted. Like uh, I've seen some people like Wes Boss who teaches, you know, he's the JavaScript guy, instructor. <laughs> uh, he actually puts a red light outside of his door. So his kids know that when the red light is on, he's recording and he should not be interrupted. Uh, vertical monitors. This one comes from um, uh, Andre Stoltz. Uh, who actually asserts that uh, turning your monitors vertical can, can make you more productive. Uh, try it out. I don't know. Uh, more oxygen, oxygen levels. Uh, sometimes brain.fm and, and frequent radio are, are just like good, you know, non, 
non-disruptive music that, that make you more productivity. So I, I think uh, I think those are interesting. Uh, there's there's a debate as to whether or not you should have your closed and open doors if you, if you're in an office, because closed door gives you more focus, but open door gives you more serendipity. Um, I, I think the the solution is that you should have sometimes that you're closed and sometimes they're open, uh, and 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 just be conscious of where where you have where you have that. Uh, so yeah, I've I've accumulated a bunch of research here, but I'm just this is a very high level overview, so we, we can uh, we can keep skimming. Just you know, ask questions and uh, if you have if you have them, and I'll come back. The final part of this external environment is this idea of virtualization, which is like a machine emulating another machine, right? Like we have this we have this concept in code, but uh, humans are really good at that, and developers basically that we call it empathy, right? We have can you empathize with other users? Uh, when I was working at Netlify, we actually had this system of like giving feedback and uh, instead of saying nits uh, and, and, and giving comments, we actually have like classifications of comments and and giving other helping other people empathize with us on what our feedback is. Um, one of the ways in which I really enjoy doing that is to preemptively review my own code. So I make the PR and without waiting for my reviewer to give any comments. I would go through my own PR and anticipate what my reviewer is going to say. So it saves one round trip of like back and forth. So, so my PR is going to get merged faster. And it also shows that my reviewer that I understand their concerns because I work with them. Uh, and it feel, makes them feel appreciated. It makes them go like, okay, yeah, yeah this person really thinks about me. Uh, and, and so I trust this person more because they're thinking about the concerns that I would bring up. So, so it says so a really, really good hack. Uh, and, and the way that you can virtualize other people is to just understand their points of view better, even though if you disagree with them, uh, just understand them. Okay, so that's, the, that's part one and part two, firmware and external devices. Uh, I'm gonna check for questions, no questions, okay. So I'm gonna, uh, then we have two more parts and then, and then we're done. Uh, so the part, three is, part, three, part three is I'm really passionate about, this is a scheduler. Um, so this is a, this is a key habit that helps you get shit done for everything else, right? Do you have a good scheduler? So what is the scheduler in terms of the code, uh, the operating system's point of view? Um, it's, people call it the, uh, hang on, I have a question here. Uh, question, question, question. Eamon says React scheduler. React is an operating system. Uh, that was my first talk. Uh, yeah, there, there, are, there are many kinds of schedulers and every time you write an operating system, you basically end up writing a scheduler. Uh, and so humans should have a scheduler as well. Like there's no, we are no exception. So, uh, so we need this like single source of truth that, that just goes, that put things, puts things in queue, pops it off the queue, works on them, does IO, does, uh, does child processes, puts everything back in the queue and just goes on an infinite loop for forever and ever and ever. Um, but the main idea that I, I, and I find from operating systems research is that you should have, you should try to have a single source of truth because um, <clears throat> getting, you know, uh, getting, getting to getting multiple sources of truth makes it, makes it very hard to debug. Um, although it's not, it's not impossible. Um, so, so actually, uh, so, so the main questions that, that, that you should ask about your own personal human scheduler is, are you dropping tasks? Uh, that's that's the baseline. Like, do not drop things that you're not supposed to drop because if, if you do, then you have a real problem. Um, do you prioritize low priority tasks over high priority tasks? Uh, this one, everyone does, right? Like, uh, we, we tend to the unimportant things that are easy to do versus high priority things that are hard. Um, and and those uh, th that's a that's a question that you really need to keep fixing. Like, I, you know, and and there 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 are ways to there are ways to address that, and we can talk about it. Are you bad at task switching? So like, when you need to do one thing and then switch over. Uh, how much how much downtime do you, do you have in between tasks and then when you're working on a task that is clearly not working out are you bad at stopping calling stopping your loss and just saying all right this is enough I, I gotta stop I gotta quit um, can you quit <coughs> do you know when to quit uh, so so those are those are interesting uh, issues to ask your uh, of your scheduler uh, there are a few prioritizing pri prioritization mechanisms that people use. Uh, obviously, at work, you might use one form, but I think for your personal life, you should also have some form of uh, idea of how to prioritize. You basically want to maximize your throughput, the amount of work you can do, the amount of utilization, the amount of like uh, system resources that, that, you're, that you have, because you, know, you only have so much. You want to minimize task turnaround time. You want to minimize waiting time uh, for each task so they don't you know, uh, run into expiry. You want to minimize your response time to other people. 
So there's a few scheduling algorithms. There's uh, priority scheduling, shortest job first, round robin scheduling. Uh, these are all, you know, algorithms, but they can be algorithms that you live by. <laughs> and and uh, because they're, they're just abstract scheduling algorithms, so you can apply for your own personal uh, inbound priorities that are coming in. Uh, and a simpler, a much simpler version of this uh, for humans, because humans can only handle so much complexity, is the two by two Eisenhower de decision matrix. Um, we typically tend to do the important, the urgent things first. So urgent and important. Of course, we do it. It's like, oh, like my homework is due tomorrow. I, I'm going to do my homework now. Uh, we also do the urgent and not important. Like, oh, there's a notification bell. Let me go check what my what my Twitter mentions say. Uh, but that there's a difference between important and not important, right? Like one thing is more important than the other. We tend to not do the not urgent and important. So if it's important, but it's not due right just yet, we typically procrastinate. Uh, and that's how it becomes urgent when it gets up to the last uh, leg. So if you read the book on getting things done, which we'll talk about later, um, it's, this, it's this whole art of scheduling this so you never arrive here because this, is, this stops every, everything else in your system. And then trying to find ways to do things, not to do things which are not important. Uh, especially if it's not urgent, not important, then you're really just wasting your life, um, which is fine. Just, you know, try not to do so much of it. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's the GTD book. That is the Bible for everyone who uh, does these things. So if you're interested in that, definitely pick up on it. Uh, I'm going to check if anyone has comments on this, on this uh, approach because uh, it, GTD is a very detailed approach. You don't need to adopt every single recommendation, uh, but just this idea that you should have a prioritization system is an important insight because nobody taught you this when you became an adult. <laughs> you just like look around and go like, how come some people have their shit together some, and some others don't? Uh, and then you, and then you learn, you, you eventually learn that uh, these are the things, these are the systems, the operating systems that people have. Okay, I have a chat request here. Eamon says, planning via calendar instead of a to-do list has helped me help, helped me a lot. Yeah. Yeah, a calendar is what you actually do. A to-do list is what you want to do. Um, so a calendar, you know, spends the one currency that you have, which is time. Whereas to-do list has an infinite um, shelf space. All right. Uh, so let's talk, and finally talk about batching. Uh, this is something I learned from my ex-boss, Sarah Drasner. Uh, she actually batches her work. So she tries to put all the meetings together. Uh, so she wrote this article in CSS Tricks. You can look up. It's, it's a really boss title, cssstricks.com slash prioritizing. Wow, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Um, anyway, so, so for her, uh, she wants to batch all meetings together. Uh, she, and then she also does intro week batching. So Mondays, uh, more meetings. Uh, Thursdays, Thursdays in IC day. So Thursday, she would have uninterrupted time just coding. Uh, and then Fridays, Fridays a bit more meetings. But, but uh, I've seen this in action and it's, she's really, uh, really, really uh, effective. And I think if you ask all the high performing developers that you know, you'll find tricks that these people have as well. So, so I, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, ask people that you, that you look up to and just say like, what was your productivity system? And they'll, they'll tell you things like this and they actually do it. So, and then it's down to you to actually do it. Uh, it's really not simple, uh, not, not harder than that. Okay, so there's firmware, the external devices, this is scheduler. But I think above all, all of this, which is like, I keep saying that more important, more important, more important. I, above all of this is the, is the kernel of the operating system, which I call the drive. So it's, it's kind of like the ghost in the machine of uh, the OS. It's the, it's the one process that drives all the other processes. Um, if you're familiar with, uh, with kernel hacking, uh, this is the idea of a, a prop, like a PID equals zero, like the, 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 the process that initiates all the other processes that are, that are being run. Um, so a lot of people have different terms for the equivalent of humans. It's called purpose, it's called vision, mission, calling, intrinsic motivation. I like the word drive, uh, basically because uh, when, I, when I see, you know, these stories, a lot of people, like, they, they, they're slacking off at Google for six years. They feel super unmotivated. That's when they, their career is over because they, they just lost interest in coding. Um, they, they, they're, they're so burned out that they're, they have to write a gist to ask for help because they don't know what to do. They, 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 they work so hard to get this job, to get, to get these skills. And once they got there, they, they, they apply themselves so much, and, and then they burned out. Um, and that's when you stop coding. So, so it's game over at that point, and I, I really want people to be aware that this is a real thing that people run into and, uh, and it, it, you have to manage it. You have to manage your own emotional health. 
uh, for Daniel Vasallo, he wrote about his own experience um, working at the company that I work at right now, where he kept getting promoted, get, getting more compensation, even at a super high level that, that would be amazing to, to most people. Uh, and he didn't feel anything. Uh, and and uh, basically because these are all extrinsic motivation measures. And really the thing that you care about is intrinsic motivation. So that's, that's the title of his blog post and I encourage you to read that as well. Your motivation gets destroyed uh, as your external motivation, ex external motivation comes up. And that's the topic of the book Drive, uh, which I really love um, because it's this paragraph really encapsulates it. Like, why do, why do adults, me as an adult, right? Like, I actually feel, and this is an honest confession, I don't feel like I want to learn a language unless I can get paid for it. It's just, it's just a fact, right? And that's such a different thing from when we used to be children. When we were children, we had inner drive. We had inner drive to learn and discover and help others. But when we grow, when we grow we're, we're being driven by our society to only respect extrinsic motivations. Like we need some reward to do things. Um, so we lose more and more of our intrinsic motivation uh, and extrinsic, the, the extrinsic reward system that uh, the world has set up for us destroys all our internal drive. Um, so that's a really good insight. And, and, and to me, that means that, um, you know, we need to find a way to keep our own internal drives around, to, to, to have, uh, to respect our own internal motivation and to find jobs and uh, means of, you know, making a living that, that align with uh, things that we fundamentally want to do. Uh, because, you know, look at all these people, like they, they made, they're making good money at whatever they're, they're doing, uh, but they're completely not internally motivated uh, because they lost their drive. There's, uh, there's, there are some other philosophies which I'm going to briefly cover. There's this concept of ikigai, which is you should be doing uh, the combination of what you're good at, what you love, what the world needs, and what can be paid for. Uh, I have in my book, I actually condensed that into two circles because I think uh, this is not necessary anymore. Um, Wait But Why, Randall Monroe, <coughs> actually, no, uh, Tim Urban. Uh, Tim Urban has this like octopus that he does, uh, octopus with only five legs. And these are all the things that motivate people. Uh, so he, this is his mental model. Uh, you can go check that out as well. Um, but basically, that, you know, that, that's, the, that's the whole summary. Like, um, I think that this is the full picture of what an operating system, of a complete operating system of a developer is. And notice that I didn't say anything about like um, learning in public. I didn't say anything about like speaking at a conference or like uh, code architecture or like mentoring others. This is all about you. This is the operating system of you and upgrading, like you, uh, upgrading the, the, the process that, by which you run your life and absorb things that come into your life and be it tasks or, or, or the environment around you or, or uh, the, the system of, of uh, your, your, your motivation. Um, I think the, I think one, one activity check, you know, like in, in any operating system, we have this kind of activity monitor thing that, that just shows like, all right, it's not consumption and all that. So what is the equivalent of our activity monitor? Uh, it's basically emotions. Uh, these are kind of like the, the code smells or like the, the system warnings that, <laughs> that might pop up uh, and it may not feel rational, uh, but I think we need to normalize talking about how we feel, especially uh, if you're, if you're a guy, you may not be so, so comfortable doing that, but it's okay to ask for help. Uh, understand that everyone has insecurities. And I think this point is, uh, is not emphasized enough by me. A lot of developers, when you ask, like, what is the most important skill that a developer should have? They say, learning how to learn, right? Uh, learn how to learn and you'll be set for life. Uh, that's really great. The only problem is that you can never learn everything in the world. And at some point, you're going to learn, to you're going to have to learn how to be happy instead of learning how to learn. Because that's the only point at which you'll be happy. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the finally say like, okay, I will never have, you know, this learning how to learn mentality is very much like I will never have enough. Whereas learning how to be happy uh, is learning how to be happy with what we have. And to forgive yourself for, for making mistakes in the past. Um, people really uh, beat themselves up, including myself. Um, so I, I, so in, this, in this category, I, my, you know, my advice is that good enough is better than best. A lot, of, a lot of newbie developers, when they come in, they're like, I want the best framework, the best cloud, the best uh, team, the best job. You obsess over benchmarks, you care what influences this thing, and you have to keep on new releases. Um, this is a nonstop treadmill. You, because you keep looking for the best, you have to do this. And you're focusing on what other people think, what other people benchmark, other people release. Instead, you turn it around and you go, what is good enough for me? So you focus on yourself. What, what do I need to do? What do I know well existing? Uh, you know, what existing technologies do I already have? And what do I enjoy? Um, 
And so I think that's a much more healthy approach to, to dealing with all the technology that, that comes in our lives. So, yeah. Um, and, and I think finally, uh, the, the last, this is the last slide. Um, you know, the, the emotional journey of creating anything great includes a lot of downs uh, and includes, includes a, a big high. And you're, you're basically creating a great career for yourself. You only have one shot at this, right? Um, and you're going through, you're going to go through some dark days, but I think if you, if you um, have, have companionship and you, you, you don't take yourself too seriously, and you persist through that. Uh, remember that you, you're building towards something uh, really great in the end of the day. Um, and it's, um, it's a, it's an emotional journey. So, so just be, be prepared for it. Be comfortable when it, when you're going through the swamp, um, you'll come out okay because other people do as well. Um, yeah, so that's that's my that's my brief pitch on the operating system of you. Hopefully, that did not take too long, and then I can uh, take questions. Um, I have uh, I have this and more on my book site, and I'm going to drop a uh, link to a discount for for people who haven't got it yet. Um, but uh, thank you. Oh, and also remember to uh, do space repetition on anything that you particularly enjoyed. Um, so that's this is a good shout out. <laughs> okay, questions. Questions, questions, questions. Um, 